Hi and welcome, James Merchant here from Impact Realty Group and welcome to our latest market update. Obviously plenty happening with COVID, the recent restrictions that were put on us in the industry. Now we're back with opens and auctions allowed for the last few weeks. I wanna take a look at our local markets, the growth rates, what's happening in terms of house prices. We're gonna take a look at sales volumes and the changes that have occurred over the last two months versus the first quarter of 2020. There's a lot of noise out there that housing market will fall. I want to give you guys an indication on the bearish scenario, but I also want to point you to you the bullish scenario for housing going forward. Okay, let's look at the growth rates in the marketplace over the last two months versus what transpired in the first quarter. Mount Eliza at the end of March had a median home price of 1216000 For the month of May, the median price has fallen slightly by 2.6%, and it now has a median home price of 1185000 So whilst there's a lot of doom and gloom that the markets are off 10 to 15%, it's not the case down here. Uh, it has consolidated back a little bit, but I think that's a great result for the Mount Eliza market. Now on to the Franks and South market. The median home price in March was 815,000. For the month of May, so the last two months, it has fallen by minus 1.6 to have a median price of 802,000. Again, similar to Mount Eliza, it's not all doom and gloom, properties are still selling and the values are certainly holding up. I'll take a look at the Frankston market. The median price for the end of March was at 611,000. It is now trading at 601,000. So a small decline of 1.1% over, over the last two months. Again, similar to Mount Eliza, Frankston South, and it is pretty consistent down the peninsula. Uh, the declines aren't as great as what everyone else is saying. So it's great news for all local residents in our area. What I want to talk about now is the sales volume. So that means how many transactions have been completed in a given month. So looking at Mount Eliza, the first three months in 2020, there was 55 homes that were sold. For the last two months, there were 20 transactions. So the first three months, an average of 18 properties were sold on a monthly basis. The last two months, 10. Now, a lot of people would have expected these sales volumes to have dropped a lot more. But the good news is, I mean, to still have 10 completed transactions per month is a great show of strength in our marketplace that buyers are still looking to buy in the area. Yes, volumes are down, but not as bad as what everyone was predicting. All right, let's look at the sales volumes in Franks and South. For the first three months in 2020, 42 homes were sold at an average of 14 homes per month. The last two months, 20 transactions. So that's an average of 10. Not a big drop in sales volumes, which is great for anyone residing in the Frankston South area. For the Frankston area, there was 105 completed sales transactions in the first three months of 2020. That's an average of 35 per month. It has fallen quite a bit, 30 transactions over the last two months with an average of 15. So you look at the Frankston market, average 35 sales in the first three months has now reduced by 15. So Frankston, in terms of volumes, have certainly pulled back more than Mount Eliza and Frankston South. The good news is properties are still selling. Yes, we've suffered a little bit of a pullback in terms of growth, but if you're a vendor thinking of selling, have all the confidence that you will get a result. One of the great things I'm noticing is out of area buyers and the inquiries for lifestyle properties. Yes, that trend's been around for a number of years, but I feel the inquiries have certainly picked up. It does make sense with COVID, people living in higher density areas, just wanting to make that shift down the peninsula for lifestyle and family reasons. One of the topics I wanna to talk about is the housing market going to collapse. We're dealing with buyers, they're saying that the market's going to drop by 10 to 30%. We notice the economists are pointing that. There's some that are bullish in housing, so what does all this mean? It's a little bit of an unknown, but what I'm gonna put uh, forward to you is the bearish scenario as to why potentially housing will continue to fall, but I'm also gonna have arguments as to the bullish scenario. So, and I'll give you my opinion as to what I think will happen. And I'm not gonna be biased because I do have a background in finance and economics, but 
I know I've, uh, I am here to protect the values in property, but there is a good reason why I am slightly bullish. Well, let's get into the bears for all those people that expect the housing market to collapse and buyers who have made mention to me that the market will collapse in September. JobKeeper, the unemployment is supporting local businesses or small businesses out there with JobKeeper payments. This is keeping unemployment at a reduced level. So once this ends, does this increase the unemployment rate? I think it's a great argument uh, for the bears. The second one is mortgage repayments. The banks have withheld consumers who can't afford to pay their mortgage, but at some time, they're gonna request their consumers to start uh, paying their mortgage. So again, it's a good argument for the bears. The third point, will the economy go back to normal pre-COVID? Will everyone go back out there spending? A lot of people were saying that won't happen again. Good point. And the fourth one is, will COVID return and will a second wave hit us? So you can see all those areas um, and it's rightly so, so I'm not discounting the bearish scenario for housing and the economy in general. On the flip side for the bullish scenario, number one, the economy returns back and we can get back to some normality, which will be uh, obviously a good thing for everyone. Two, interest rates, historic lows. Can you believe you can get a home loan interest rate at 2%? For investors, it's sitting now at around the 2.5. That is crazy and that's cheap money. Three, and this is the biggest thing that I am more now leaning on a bullish scenario versus a bearish. Central banks and governments worldwide have proven to date they're gonna do everything to backstop this economy and stop it from collapsing. So that is a key thing when you're looking at a bullish scenario. So even though fundamentally labour markets are poor, retail spending's poor, GDP's contracting, the economy is contracting, governments are going to do whatever it takes to put money into the system to make sure it re kicks off. So looking at the bear versus the bull case, um, I'm leaning on the bullish scenario purely because of the governments and central banks and what they are going to do. Well, I hope this information's been useful. It's uh, certainly not as bad as what everyone is saying. I think if you are needing advice, thinking of selling, just have the confidence that you will get a result. Um, there's certainly buyers still out there. Uh, we'll continue to provide you updates in the marketplace and we're gonna track this very, very closely. It's, uh, we're in a changing landscape, a moving landscape. So we're gonna monitor this and We'll do everything possible to keep uh, our audience, our clients fully up to date. If you need any advice, if you are thinking of buying or selling in the area, feel free to give us a call on 0433 480 870. And uh, I'd love to come out just to discuss this in further detail. Take care and we will speak to you soon.